Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this uh, webinar entitled Combining Candlesticks with Western Technical Analysis. And today, of course, is FXStreet.com's Free Access Day. Uh, my name is James Chen. I'm the Chief Technical Strategist at FX Solutions. And today what I'm going to be talking about is uh, a general approach, uh, a methodology to trading Forex that combines Japanese candlesticks with Western technical analysis. Now, uh, most of you probably already trade based upon uh, the candlesticks as opposed to bars. But uh, today what I'm going to be talking about is combining uh, the signals or the uh, what, you, what you read from a candlestick with other elements uh, from Western technical analysis. So uh, I, I actually did a webinar on this uh, about a year ago, so um, many of you may have already seen that. But today's will be recorded, so um, you know if you want to come back to it and take a look at it again, uh, it will be on fxstreet.com. Okay, so uh, let's get started. Um, before I get to uh, both the, the rest of this PowerPoint as well as uh, my live charts, which I'm going to show you a lot of examples on, uh, let me first uh, talk briefly about myself, just uh, in case uh, any of you are not familiar with uh, who I am or what I do. So very briefly. Um, about me. I am the Chief Technical Strategist at FX Solutions, uh, which means that I do all of the analysis uh, and all the strategy in terms of uh, technicals uh, at FX Solutions. We are a broker uh, in the U.S. and we also have uh, branches in uh, the U.K. as well as Australia. Now, I've traded actively as a private trader pretty much since the inception of Retail Forex, and before that I was uh, trading futures and equities. Now, I use primarily uh, technical analysis in my trading, although I do um, take into account fundamentals as well. I am primarily also a trend-following trader. For those of you, uh, I don't know if, you've, uh, if any of you were at the ITC in Barcelona, but uh, I talked a lot about trend-following there. And I will be coming out with a DVD um, on trend-following um, through fxstreet.com. Okay, so I'm also a Chartered Market Technician, a CMT, which is basically the designation for uh, market technicians or uh, technical analysts, uh, at least in the U.S., but more so, uh, more and more so globally as well. I'm a Registered Commodity Trading Advisor, or CTA, uh, with the National Futures Association here in the U.S., which means that uh, I could trade uh, funds both in uh, futures and forex, which I, I have done in the past as well. Now, I also publish daily and intraday analysis, including the chart of the day, which uh, many of you may, may have seen, uh, both on our website at fxsolutions.com, as well as fxstreet.com, uh, among many other websites. I have a, a Forex analysis, intraday analysis, daily analysis, and education blog at fxpath.fxstreet.com. I'm one of the bloggers there, so you might have uh, seen me on fxstreet uh, as well. Now, I've uh, authored numerous articles in, um, for example, Forbes.com, Futures Magazine, Technical Analysis of Stocks and Commodities Magazine, SFO Magazine, uh, et cetera. In the past, um, very recently, I did have an article come out in SFO Magazine on multiple time frame trading, so you might want to take a look at that. Um, it just explains all of the, uh, the intricacies of multiple time frame trading according to uh, Dr. Alexander Elder's triple screen methodology. So... Um, that's, uh, that's there on SFO Magazine. I'm quoted on a regular basis by Reuters News, Dow Jones, uh, Newswires, uh, Associated Press, as well as the International Tri Herald Tribune. So uh, you may have seen me there as well. Now, I've uh, authored uh, Essentials of Foreign Exchange Trading, which is a, a book that's now uh, out, and it came out in March of this year. So it pretty much has all of the uh, strategies and uh, an introduction, the fundamentals, technicals, uh, et cetera, regarding the Forex market. So uh, some of you may have seen that, and that is available. And I have an upcoming book called The Essentials of Technical Analysis for Financial Markets, which is basically um, it concentrates on the technicals for all the financial markets, uh, including Forex, futures, uh, commodities, uh, equities, uh, et cetera. So you could take a look at that. That will be coming out in April of 2010, and I actually just finished it uh, when I was in – Barcelona for the uh, International Traders Conference from FX Street. So anyway, that's uh, very briefly about me. Now let's get to the um, to the main part of this presentation, where I'm going to be talking about the combination of candlesticks and Western technical analysis. And I will be showing you again, as always, I will be showing you uh, charts uh, to illustrate all of my points uh, after 
I talk about uh, what's in what's uh, in these slides. So let's get started. Now, uh, just a brief overview of candlesticks and Western technical analysis. And for those of you who have been at my prior webinars, I, uh, I tend to have a lot of text on my uh, on my slides. And if you uh, if you miss any of it, and if you want any of my slides, uh, feel free to email me. I will post my email address at the end of this webinar. So briefly, an overview of candlesticks and Western technical analysis. Now, Japanese candlesticks, for those of you who are not familiar with this, but most of you are, but I'm going to go through it anyway, uh, was uh, brought, brought to the West by a trader analyst uh, by the name of Steve Niss. And uh, he translated esoteric financial texts into English from Japanese. And I've worked um, very closely with Steve Nissen in the past, talked to him a lot about it. Uh, he's done a lot of great work uh, in terms of uh, bringing uh, candlesticks over. And, uh, you know, really what you see uh, on your charting platforms now, where the defaults for most charting platforms uh, is the candlestick as opposed to the bar, um, that's uh, really from basically thanks to Steve Nissen that, that uh, you know, all his work pioneering uh, candlestick analysis. Now, candles work for all financial markets. Um, and as you see uh, in the stocks, uh, in futures, in Forex, et cetera, but they're slightly different for the Forex market than, uh, for example, the futures market or the equities market because of characteristics of the Forex market like the 24-hour market. And because of the 24-hour market, there's a relative lack of gaps. So there are a lot of different um, patterns that you see in other markets uh, that, uh, that are, you know, rely upon the gaps that uh, you, don't have, you don't really have in the Forex market. So uh, what I'm going to, uh, you know, what I'm going to be concentrating on, uh, because of the uniqueness of the forex market, is a subset of candle patterns that forex traders primarily focus on. And I'm going to show you all of these, both, uh, you know, in illustrated form as well as on my charts. Now, virtually all uh, the candlestick proponents, including uh, Steve Nissen, advocate the use of candles. This is very important. Advocate the use of candles to confirm or be confirmed by Western technical analysis and not as the primary um, decision, uh, decision maker in, in their trades. So uh, some people may say that they trade uh, just on candlesticks and they, they look at candlestick patterns and they make uh, uh, decisions based upon that. Now, uh, this was never the intent of uh, anyone, including Steve Nissen, um, you know, to be used as a primary decision maker. Candlesticks are meant to confirm or be confirmed by Western technical analysis and or fundamental analysis, but today I'm going to be talking about uh, just uh, technical analysis. And, and that's a very important point. Now, candles are best at confirming or warning of potential reversals. Now, this is, I'm going to be talking a lot about, uh, you know, I, as I mentioned before, I am a trend follower uh, by nature, but uh, today I'm going to be talking primarily about reversals. Now, that does not mean that I'm a counter trend trader necessarily. What it can mean and what it means uh, much of the time is that I'm trading reversals within the trend. So for example, if you have an uptrend and you're looking for dips in the market to get into uh, a certain uptrending situation, then what you have there is you're looking for a reversal at, the, uh, at, at a low in an uptrend. So I'm looking for reversals, yes, but within the context of the trend, okay? But if you are a counter trend trader as well, um, combining candlesticks with Western technical analysis is also uh, very, very powerful. Now, uh, I talk a lot about confluence, and many of you who have heard, uh, you know, what I've uh, said in the past in my webinars and seminars, et cetera, I talk a lot about confluence. Confluence is simply uh, the confirmations or the coming together of different aspects, different factors of technical analysis to make your rationale for your trade stronger. And I'm going to talk about confluence in a second. And uh, Japanese candlesticks are a big, big part of, of uh, finding confluence in your trading. Now, uh, utilizing candles instead of bars, uh, you know, really offers no disadvantages. Uh, bars and candles have essentially the same price information. That is the open, the high, the low, and the close, the OHLC. So if you take a look at uh, a bar, you're going to see OHLC. If you look, uh, look at a candle, you're going to see OHLC as, as well. However, what is the difference between bars and candles? Uh, the candles, in my opinion, have a lot more advantages in terms of the candlestick patterns that bars, you could also see on bars, and don't get me wrong, uh, you know, anything that uh, you see on a candle, you can see on a bar as well, but 
candlesticks are, it's easier to see these types of patterns on candlesticks, and that's what makes them so powerful. Now, in terms of, uh, you know, the price information, they're all the same, but candlesticks have these unique patterns that make them more powerful, in my opinion, than, uh, than the bar charts. Okay. Now, uh, the combination of uh, candlesticks and Western techni uh, technical analysis, of course, can be used on all time frames. I will be showing you primarily daily charts because that's uh, primarily what I work off of, uh, although in my trading, I also use uh, four-hour charts, one-hour charts, and sometimes even lower, but um, you know, I just want, want it to be known that this, these are fractal. These, uh, you know, phenomena that occur on these charts are fractal, which means they occur on all time frames. But, uh, you know, the, uh, the examples I'm going to be showing you today are on uh, the daily time frame. Now, the elements of Western technical analysis to be used in conjunction with the candle patterns uh, include uh, support resistance identifiers, including uh, horizontal support and resistance, where price turned in the past or reversed in the past. Uh, I will be showing you charts, Tiberius. Uh, right now I'm showing you the, the slides, but I will be showing you the charts in a second. Now, uh, you know, besides horizontal uh, support and resistance, we also have trend lines, which are dynamic support and resistance, uh, i.e. uptrend support or downtrend resistance. We also have chart patterns, the triangles, the, uh, you know, the flags, the, the pennants, uh, the head and shoulders, et cetera. We have uh, Fibonacci's, Fibonacci retracements and extensions, as well as pivot points, um, volatility bands like the Bollinger Bands, oscillators, which I'm going to show you a lot of, uh, about in a second, um, with the stochastics, RSI, you know, et cetera. Now, the key points uh, to all of this in terms of the candlesticks, uh, one of the key points is that long shadows or long wicks represent price rejection price failure to move in the prior direction, and they forewarn of potential turns in the market. And again, these turns in the market can be uh, within the context of a trend, not necessarily saying you're picking tops and bottoms in, uh, for reversals, but in the context of a trend, in an uptrend, for example, you're looking for dips in the market, and that's where you can look for potential turns, or in a downtrend, you're looking for um, minor rallies in the market. Okay, so uh, that's what I'm going to be talking about. So uh, whether you're a trend trader or a counter trend trader, um, you're going to be looking for turns in the market. Okay, uh, for the, I know uh, most of you are familiar with what a, uh, you know how, how a candle works, but this is of the basic structure of a candle versus a bar, and uh, you know candlesticks are heavily reliant upon the body, the body being the thick part of the uh, candlestick. And uh, the wicks or the shadows on the top and bottom are, represent the highs and lows of that particular period. And uh, the candlestick relies upon the color of the body. Uh, and what I'm going to be showing you today, I'm using green and red, green being a, a bullish candle, red being a bearish candle. Uh, but you'll often see on some charting platforms, white is a bullish candle and black is a bearish candle. Same thing, doesn't matter. Uh, the, but the colors, uh, the color scheme that, that you use, uh, primarily what you're looking for are bullish and bearish, okay? So that's basically what a candlestick looks like for any of you who, are, who may not be familiar with it, but I think most of you are, so let's move on from here. Now, high probability Forex candle patterns that I'm going to be talking about today. Now, uh, the, the, the basic thing with candles, as I mentioned before, the key point in terms of a lot of these candles are the wicks, and the wicks, again, represent price rejection, price failure, and a potential turn in the market. Now, don't get too caught up with the names of these uh, pa uh, patterns. I know, uh, you know, Steve Ness and a lot of uh, candlestick proponents talk about all these exotic names, uh, but at the same time, you, you're really concentrating on what the candle is telling you, not necessarily, uh, you know, memorizing what the names mean and all of that, but uh, you're looking at, uh, you know, how price is reacting on a certain candle. So the forex candle patterns that I'm going to be talking about today, and uh, in my opinion, are most uh, applicable to the forex market, include the hammer and the shooting star, which are really, really strong um, signs. And you know, in terms of uh, the hammer and shooting star, in terms of uh, bar charts, the equivalent will probably probably be the the pin bars. And if you, any of you have ever heard of a pin bar, you know they're basically hammers on the bottom, shooting stars on the top. 
So that's the equivalent there. Those are probably the strongest, in my opinion, the strongest uh, candlestick patterns are the hammers and the shooting stars. And I'll show it to you visually in a second. We also have hanging men and inverted hammers, doji, uh, all types of dojis. Um, I'm sorry, not dojis, doji, um, including the, uh, you know, uh, there are a bunch of different names for them. Um, and you'll find uh, all kinds of like, uh, you know, all kinds of different uh, names for these, but basically they're the same. A doji means uh, a bar or a candle that open and close at the same price or very, very similar prices. Then you've got spinning tops. Uh, we have bullish and bearish engulfing patterns, harami, and uh, there are many, many others, but uh, all of the above are most uh, applicable to the Forex market. And uh, they're probably among the simplest of the candlestick patterns but sometimes simplest is, uh, is better in my opinion. So let's uh, talk about what exactly these candlestick patterns look like. Okay, so we have the single ca candlestick patterns, and this, this comes directly from uh, my book as well. But, uh, you know, take a look at this. This is a good illustration of what these look like uh, at, their, at their most basic level. You have the doji. Um, this is basically uh, just a candle that opens and closes at uh, either equal price, or this, uh, you know, or very, very similar prices, off by, a, you know, a pip or two. But uh, primarily, we're talking about equal prices on the open and close, which represents indecision in the market and a possible uh, changing of uh, of the uh, of the trend or uh, turn or reversal. Okay, same thing with a spinning top. A spinning top is a small body with long wicks uh, above and below. Okay, and that also, much like a doji, represents indecision in the market. Okay, now uh, the two that I believe are the strongest in terms of talking about uh, potential impending uh, turns in the market, whether with, uh, within a trend or in a counter trend fashion, uh, are the hammers and the shooting stars uh, over on the right here. So as you can see, a hammer has to follow a downtrend or a down run, okay? A hammer has to do that. Now, what characterizes a hammer? Uh, it's a small body on the top of the candle with a long wick on the bottom. Now, uh, a hammer can have a little wick on the, uh, you know, on the top as well, but preferably um, either no wick or a very small wick uh, or shadow on the top, okay? What does this represent? If you take a look here, we have a downtrend, right? And then uh, price goes all the way down and then it closes near the top of its range. What does that mean? We're talking it was rejected down here at the bottom. It was rejected. It failed to continue the, uh, the downtrend. That's the simple logic behind the, uh, the hammer. In much the same vein, uh, a shooting star, you have an uptrend. It has to follow an uptrend or an uprun, okay, like, like so, where uh, price moves all the way up and then falls back down to uh, close near the bottom of the candle range. And again, what does that mean? It means it was rejected at the top. It was rejected. It failed to uh, continue uh, at the top. So this is, um, this is a bullish, I'm sorry, in terms of the shooting star, this is a uh, shooting star. It's a bearish signal uh, talking about price failure and a possible impending turn in the market. Of course, let me um, stress once again, hammers and shooting stars uh, should not be used as uh, you know, the primary decision maker in your trades, rather, as I'll show you in a second, to be combined with the Western technical analysis. And, and that makes a really strong confluence of factors that makes your trade uh, of a much higher probability. So again, shooting star, uptrend, rejection at the highs, and then it comes back down to uh, uh, where the, the bears are winning out and a possible impending turn in the market. Hanging men inverted hammers. These are not as strong um, signals, in my, in my opinion, uh, as hammers and shooting stars. Hanging men uh, have to occur after an uptrend. And what happens is uh, you have a small body on top with a long wick on the bottom. Okay. Now, what this represents is indecision in the market, much like a spinning top or a doji. Um, but at the same time, they also talk about uh, potential impending reversals. Same thing with an inverted hammer on the downside. You have, a, you have a downtrend or a down run, and then a long wick on top with a, a little body on the bottom. And this talks about indecision in the market and a possible uh, signal that uh, there may be a turn, impending turn in the market as well.
Okay, so those are the single candle, candle patterns, and if any of you want this, um, you can find this anywhere on the internet. But uh, you know, if you want my uh, PowerPoint slide, I will be happy to send it to you. Okay, so let's go on to multiple candle patterns, and uh, these are the three that I'm going to be talking about: uh, engulfing patterns, uh, which are uh, bullish engulfing pattern, bearish engulfing pattern. Now, a bullish engulfing pattern is simply, uh, you know, a candle. Uh, in this case, it will be a black candle. Uh, with uh, a white candle engulfing or encompassing the previous candle. So what does this talk about? This talks about, this is also, these are also reversal patterns. What does this talk about? It's a short black candle, which uh, in itself uh, represents some indecision in the market, and then a big bullish candle that encompasses the prior candle, which means that the bulls are winning out against the, uh, the bears. Okay? Very simply, that's the bullish engulfing pattern. Opposite with bearish engulfing pattern. You have an uptrend, you've got a small candle, followed by a large bearish candle that engulfs or encompasses the prior candle. What does this mean? The bears are winning it out against the, uh, against the bulls in this case. So again, another um, possible uh, turning point in the market. Harami, uh, also represent uh, indecision in the market. You've got a big white candle here, a big bullish candle followed by a little black candle here. Indecision in the market, um, a possibility of, uh, of a turn or impending reversal in the market. Uh, the opposite of, of that Harami is, the, uh, is this other Harami, which you have a long black candle followed by a short white candle. And again, indecision in the market. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. The Western technical uh, factors that I'm going to be talking about in conjunction with that, uh, with these candlestick patterns, are uh, again, previously visited horizontal support or resistance level, where price turned in the past. If any of you have seen any of my analysis, I talk a lot about this. Um, also, uh, trend line uh, or diagonal support or resistance level. Uh, you have uptrend support, downtrend resistance. Uh, these can be used very effectively with the candlestick patterns. You have Fibonacci levels, especially the 38.2%, 50%, and 61.8%. Those are the key Fibonacci levels. There are many other Fibonacci levels, but uh, I tend to concentrate on these three only because many people are looking at it. Um, and also, uh, in terms of the extensions, I tend to concentrate on the 161.8% uh, uh, extension as well. Then you've got pivot points, the mathematically derived um, from the uh, high-low close of, of the day before. And those are mathematically uh, plotted on your, uh, on your chart. And those, in combination with the candlestick, candlestick patterns, also works really well. Uh, then you have the Western uh, reversal patterns, including double, triple, tops and bottoms, the head and shoulders, etc. cetera. Um, you have Bollinger Bands, which I use a lot of. And uh, the, when I talk about Bollinger Bands, I'm talking about the lower band uh, you know, uh, serving as support, whereas the upper band serves as resistance. I'm not talking about the squeeze where, you know, for example, it's, uh, you know, the, the bands tighten and then, and then pop out, and that's a, uh, that's a trend-following technique. But uh, in this case, in terms of the Bollinger Bands, I'm talking about support and resistance. And then uh, we've got oscillators, which in this case, I'm going to show you the uh, stochastics. So uh, we'll talk about that. Okay, Tiberius, yeah, I know. Uh, I'm going to be, you know, there are a lot of people that are not familiar with, uh, you know, what I'm talking about right now. So, you know, there are many people in here, so I'd like to uh, try to, you know, address that. So I will be talking about uh, other stuff in a second. Now, Confluence. Confluence, uh, again, if you've, ever, uh, if you've ever been to any of my um, uh, webinars or seminars in the past, I talk a lot about this. Uh, this is basically what I'm talking about in terms of the candlesticks uh, combined with the, uh, with the Western technical analysis. Now, it's very simple and logical. Confluence is all about multiple technical confirmations. Um, it's coinciding technical factors that collectively reinforce each other. Uh, and that's what we're doing basically with the candlesticks and the, um, and the, uh, the Western technical analysis. So it could be any combination of two uh, or more, or preferably more technical factors. And uh, again, all technical indicators and signals are stronger when two or more of them are pointing in the same direction. So for example, you've got a strong support level, and then you've got a hammer there. That's a, a good possibility that there will be a turn at that support level. Now, confluence ca factors can be simultaneous or consecutive, and I'll show you that in my charts on a, in a second. Um, 
basically, uh, you know, uh, confluence works because of uh, the self-fulfilling prophecy. So when I say self-fulfilling prophecy, I'm saying that, uh, you know, in terms of support and resistance, you have a support level. Many people are looking at that support level. Many people are training upon that support level. And so at that point, uh, you know, uh, some significant event is expected to happen at that support level. So the key tools, again, for, uh, you know, this, uh, finding uh, confluence are support and resistance levels, trend lines, Fibonacci pivot points, including the candlestick patterns that I'm going to be talking about, bar chart patterns, moving averages, oscillators, and volatility indicators like the Bollinger Bands, et cetera. Okay. So um, finally, I'm going to be showing you some charts right now. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be showing you uh, today three charts um, on my uh, three daily charts, and hopefully you can all see uh, my charts here. And I, I've uh, I've uh, labeled all of the areas where I see uh, you know the combination of Japanese candlesticks occur with uh, with the t uh, Western technical analysis. Now, uh, again, don't be too uh, caught up or hung up on the uh, the actual labels. Um, but we're talking uh, ma mainly what, what the candlesticks are trying to tell you, okay? So let's start off from the very beginning here. And this is a daily chart. I'm going way back. I got all of these uh, different uh, examples here going all the way up to the present. Now, um, what we have back here, we have a um, – let me zoom out a bit. Okay, we have a, a clear uptrend line. This was way back uh, in uh, 2006. And uh, I, I'm just showing you way back here just to show you how often this occurs, okay? So uh, in terms of you've got an uptrend, a clear uptrend, and uh, you've got uh, a hammer candle here, if any of you could see that. That's a hammer candle uh, combined with, and uh, if any of you have seen what I've talked about in the past with regard to oscillators, and by the way, I will be having a webinar um, this month on, uh, on uh, trading just based upon the oscillators. But uh, th these are the stochastics here, and uh, let me, just to address your question real quick, let me show you what I use in terms of the oscillators. Okay, 14.33 is my, uh, for this particular chart, 14.33 is my setting for the slow stochastics. But anyway, uh, you've got a hammer candle here after a clear downtrend, a hammer candle rejection down there uh, combined with a turn up. Uh, from uh, oversold, and this occurs within uh, an uptrend situation. Next thing over here, as you can see, uh, we have a clear hammer candle after uh, a prolonged down, down run here. It occurs right at this uptrend line, okay? A hammer candle, long wick to the low side, to the downside, and a small body on top, and coupled with a turn up from uh, oversold on stochastics, right at the uptrend line, and that's, uh, that's a good high probability possibility of a turn within the context of the trend, as I talked about before. Okay? So now let me just show you um, several more here. We have a, a – over here we have, a, you know, you could call it a doji shooting star, um, you know, a shooting star, or uh, what have you. It doesn't matter what you call it. Main thing here is you're talking about uh, to the upside. You've got a long wick, okay, and, uh, and a turn down from over, overbought on the stochastics. Now, this is not the important one because uh, uh, there's not that much confluence of, uh, you know, in terms of uh, this making a turn right here. However, once you get over here, uh, you see that, uh, you know, right at this resistance level, again, this is combining Japanese candlesticks with the, uh, with the uh, Western technical analysis. At this uh, resistance level, you, you see this establishes resistance with this shooting star. Resistance was hit again. And then over here, we have a shooting star here, um, at, right at resistance again, okay? Now, more importantly, in the context of this uh, continuing uptrend here, we have in the euro dollar, this is a euro dollar daily chart, uh, you see that you have an engulfing pattern here, okay? And this in combination down here with a turn up w on the uh, stochastics, okay? And then you've got a shooting star up here, of course, as I just mentioned, um, and then it comes back down and it revisits this uptrend line right here, okay? So you've got uh, what we call a harami here, which is a small candle followed Following uh, a large candle, it represents indecision in the market, 
and uh, we have a turn up on the oscillator right here, and it occurs again right at the uh, right at the uptrend line. And again, if you take a look here on the um, on the Bollinger Bands, this is another confluence factor uh, of technical analysis where we're using the Bollinger Bands as support and resistance. Uh, yeah, so Krana, this will work on any time frame. Again, as I mentioned, uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, any technical analysis or most technical analysis is what we call fractal. It works on all time frames, uh, but at the same time, you know, I tend to look at uh, longer term time frames. I feel that they are, uh, you know, any of these patterns are more common and more um, reliable on the, on the larger time frames. Okay. So we have an uptrend here. If, if you're uh, if you're an, a trend trader, you're still trading within the um, uh, within the context of an uptrend. And what do we have here? Um, we have resistance. Okay, this resistance has been established with uh, two shooting stars, and uh, right at this level here. Now, what are we looking for here? We're looking for uh, possible continuation, or we're looking for it to turn down here. What happens here? We have an engulfing pattern. Okay, uh, this is a very big engulfing pattern right here. Now, engulfing patterns in other markets, uh, the Bollinger Bands, uh, the Bollinger Bands uh, in terms of, uh, you know, what I use are ju just the defaults. Uh, most people uh, will use the default, which is the 20-period SMA in the middle and two standard deviations above and below, okay? Some people will use, uh, you know, three standard deviations, one standard deviation, and they'll use a different SMA, but I'm just using the default in this, in this uh, case. Now, again, uh, in this particular period, in a sideways moving market, uh, you're looking to possibly use the Bollinger Bands as support and resistance, and it worked pretty well in these cases, if you see the shooting star and the Sarami. Okay, so again, at this resistance right here, what do we see? We see established resistance. We're either uh, watching for price to respect that resistance or to break out. Those are basically the only two options here, respect or violation. Uh, Harry, my, uh, my time frame for this is the daily chart. I'm using Euro dollar daily, and all of the, what I'm going to show you is daily. But again, you can use any time frame you want. But anyway, uh, if you take a look here, again, uh, you know, in other, uh, in other markets, uh, futures, um, you know, what have you, futures, uh, equities, uh, you're going to see different types of engulfing patterns. But uh, in this particular case, uh, you can see this is a clear forex uh, engulfing pattern where you have, um, you know, the close, uh, the open of the, uh, of the engulfing bar continue off from the close of the engulfed bar, if that makes any sense. Okay, because there are no gaps in, or there are very few gaps in forex. But anyway, this is a very clear engulfing pattern, and we're looking for either a violation or a respect of this resistance, and in this case, the engulfing pattern confirms the uh, violation of resistance. Okay, so that's confirming. This uh, Japanese candlestick pattern is confirming the Western technical uh, analysis of resistance right here. Okay, so in this particular case, this turned out really good, but uh, let's move on from there. Okay, now uh, this is a shooting star. It doesn't uh, happen at, uh, you know, very much in terms of um, uh, other technical analysis except for this oscillator turned down here. Okay, so this is not uh, that, uh, you know, reliable uh, a signal because there is really nothing else to show you here. Um, but once it comes down here, and as you see uh, over here, you see that there's a, a doji hammer. I didn't circle this because uh, there's really no other... Uh, no other, um, you know, element of technical analysis to say that, uh, you know, this doji hammer has any real uh, reliability. But what happens is once this support is established, we see that a doji hammer occurs here, okay? So you see it occurs here, and in conjunction, and now we're in a sideways moving market, in conjunction with a turn up from uh, the stochastics, from oversold with the doji hammer right at support, okay? Um, and then we have an engulfing pattern here. Um, and in, I'm sorry, an engulfing pattern right here where uh, this is near support again. Okay, again, a sideways moving market near support. We got an engulfing pattern here, a turn in the market. Uh, and the, But more importantly, right here, we have a hammer or 
whatever you want to call it, uh, with a, a long lower wick, this occurs right at established support right here, in conjunction with the oscillator down here, in conjunction with the Bollinger Bands right here. In a sideways moving market, we're using the Bollinger Bands as uh, possible support and resistance. Lots of confluence right here. Okay, next. Um, we have this all-time high back here uh, in, um, at around 160 on the euro dollar, okay? Now, what do we see uh, occurs right here is a doji, um, a doji shooting star, if you can take a look right there. Uh, now, that occurs again right at the resistance. All-time high resistance is very strong. Um, so uh, you're looking again for any type of uh, any type of violation or respect. In this case, this is respect of the uh, prior resistance, and it's shown with a Doji shooting star right here, Doji shooting star, as well as a turn down from uh, oscillator, as well as the um, Bollinger bands. Lots of confluence right there. Okay, now we're seeing that uh, there was a turn down from all time resistance. Uh, do we know that there's going to be uh, a reversal, a complete reversal in, in the market? No, we don't know at this point. We're still looking for a possibility of uh, uptrend uh, you know, activity, but it doesn't show up. So uh, from there, we're looking at several different signals um, after this doji shooting star, which includes uh, you know, engulfing patterns uh, over here. Now, if you take a look, uh, what's a good uh, sign of a possible reversal in the market? it's a break of a trend line, right? So we have an uptrend line here. We have an uptrend line here. And let's move over here real quick. Uh, we have a breakdown of the uptrend line, and these, this is an engulfing pattern, okay? So that's uh, the candlesticks in combination with, the, uh, with all, of these, um, all of these bearish signals right here, starting with the doji shooting star right at all-time high resistant, okay? So hopefully that makes sense to everyone. Uh, let me go. Uh, which part of stocks, percent K or percent D, is used for di uh, divergences? Well, I'm not really talking about divergences uh, right now, but um, you know, in terms of uh, moving down from uh, from over overbought or moving up from oversold, uh, basically they're they're very similar. Uh, they're very close. If you want to use RSI, which only has one line. Uh, or a CCI, which only has one line, that's fine. I tend to like to use the slow stochastics, but um, you know, I'm not uh, looking e either for the uh, percent K or percent D. I'm looking for basically uh, both of them to be moving down. Okay, so now uh, we have the start of um, a start of a possible uh, downtrend. Now this occurs after this uptrend line is broken to the downside, plus this uh, prior support is also broken down to the downside with long candles, as you can see. Okay, and then we turn into uh, this area here where we have uh, what's beginning uh, to look like a downtrend situation. Uh, now, what do we have here? I'm sorry, this may be a little hard to see, but uh, this is a, a doji hammer that occurs right at uh, prior support or prior support resistance, okay? So that's a, a possible intending uh, something to happen, a turn. And as you can see, that's also, um, that's also confirmed by the stochastics down here. Uh, we have a Harami pattern right at prior um, resistance here. A Harami pattern uh, representing indecision in the market right at prior resistance. This is a pullback maneuver, a very, I'm sorry, a very big pullback maneuver up to, uh, up to resistance. And then from there, of course, it drops uh, very well. And this, uh, this is confirmed by the oscillator down here, a move down from overbought, a Harami pattern right at resistance, a pullback maneuver. Okay, uh, quickly let me go through these. I have a couple other charts to show you. Um, uh, we have a, a clear, let me see, we have a clear uh, a shooting star here, so possibility of a turn. This did not uh, turn out so well. But um, as you can see here, we have the beginnings of a downtrend situation, and then we had that big spike that occurred in, um, uh, in the end of uh, 2008, okay? And that happened to be a 61.8% uh, Fibonacci retracement 
of the up here, of the all-time high up here, down to the low down here, 61.8% was a clear shooting star. Okay, so run down here, retraces to 61.8% with a shooting star, confirmed by the oscillator down here, moving down, and that's a possibility of a, bull, a bearish turn. And also, there's a trend line here, too. Lots of confluence there. So if you're just looking at price action and what price action is trying to tell you, then you could find lots of clues of possibilities of, uh, you know, for high probability trades. Okay, so, um, you know, moving on, uh, we have, um, let's see here. Uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, a move down to, a move down to, uh, you know, around support here. And then uh, a possibility of a new uptrend, which, uh, which actually does occur. And then uh, that's confirmed with a breakout above this uh, trend line. Okay, it broke out above this trend line, and that's confirmed as a, a, you know, a change of trend. Okay, uh, what else? Uh, at this point right here, if you could see, we have a doji confirmed by um, the oscillator down here. Okay, and then uh, we have a new downtrend line here. I'm sorry, the, this existing downtrend line here. Uh, we have an engulfing pattern here where uh, price retraced back to the downtrend line and it formed an engulfing pattern. That's another signal that at that point, perhaps price is respecting this downtrend, which it ultimately does. Uh, and then we have a new uptrend here, of course. Um, uh, okay, so now here, we have uh, established resistance here, which turns into support, as you can see. So we have resistance, resistance, support. What happens at the support? After a downtrend or down run, we have a harami. Okay, and I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, draw it down here, but also we have a move up from uh, almost, um, almost uh, oversold down here. Okay, so lots of different confluence factors right there as well. Established resistance turns into established uh, support with a harami and uh, oscillator within the context of the new uptrend. Okay, and just a couple more recent, uh, recent times. We've got a spinning top uh, also can be considered a harami uh, with uh, this type of, uh, you know, event on the oscillator. Uh, and this is uh, within an uptrending situation. You've got an uptrend line here. Right at the uptrend line, you have the spinning top slash Harami. And then uh, over here, also at this uptrend line, uh, and also uh, to the very bottom of the Bollinger Bands here, we have a hammer situation confirmed down here by oscillator. All of this is confluence using Japanese candlesticks in, in conjunction with the uh, Western technical analysis. Okay, so that's the euro dollar. Let me turn quickly over to the uh, dollar yen. Um, just a couple things I want to show you here. We have, uh, this is dollar yen daily. Okay, we've got, uh, we've got a downtrend situation right here. Clear engulfing pattern. Yes, it poked through up here a little bit. But at the same time, we have a clear engulfing pattern talking about, uh, you know, future bearishness. Okay. Um, uh, let me see. We have a spinning top here. We got uh, established support down here. Uh, confirmed with a hammer candle here, a hammer candle confirmed by the oscillator down here. Okay. Uh, currently on the uh, on the current uh, dollar yen daily chart, we have a downtrending situation, a continuing downtrending situation. Price did poke up through the resistance level on the on the channel. We have a dark cloud cover here. I didn't talk about that before, but there is a gap here. Uh, dark cloud cover, bearishness confirmed by the oscillator in a downtrending situation. Uh, this was a false breakout of the uh, channel. Uh, and then we have, uh, you know, doji hangman uh, engulfing pattern right at the downtrend right here. Okay, finally, real quick. I know I, I ran out of time. But real quick, let me show you um, just something on the Dollar Canada. Uh, dollar Canada uh, for the daily charts, um, this uh, was... Uh, Strong resistance, strong uh, long-term um, resistance here established. Then we got a shooting star right here. This is a perfect, perfect shooting star right here. 
okay, right at resistance. And then here again, uh, the fourth touch of resistance, we got an engulfing pattern. And that's confirmed by the oscillator. And I'm sorry I couldn't go through a little bit more. I was a little rushed at the end, but I think uh, since this is uh, free access day, um, we do have uh, other people coming up uh, to speak. Now, I'd like to thank everyone for, uh, you know, for coming to this webinar. Now, any additional questions, uh, I said I would uh, put down my email address. So feel free to contact me by email if you want uh, either my charts or my PowerPoint. Uh, feel free to contact me at jchan at fxsoul.com. And check out my chart of the day on FX Solutions as well as my blog on FX Street. And look for my book, Essentials of Foreign Exchange Trading. Again, if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to uh, email me. Thank you very much for your time.